Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from ExitAutomation.com and this is part 28 of our Coded UI video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about data-driven testing with Coded UI. And this is part 2 of data-driven testing with Coded UI. So before watching this part, I'd request you to watch part 27 since part 27 has got part 1 of DDT in Coded UI testing. So in part 27 of this video series, we talked about reading the data from an Excel and then parsing it and then storing it into a data table. So we performed the operation until that. So in this part, we're going to store the data out from a data table into a C sharp collections. So for that, I'm going to create a custom class first and then I'm going to create a list of custom class and then I'm going to populate the Excel data readers data which is nothing but the data table into the list to our required format so the custom class will actually have some of the following auto implemented properties like row numbers column name and column values so you'll understand why I'm creating this custom class and then again why I'm creating the list of type custom class all those things in just a minute but just understand that we're going to create a custom class and we're going to have these three auto implemented properties like row numbers, column name and column value. So row number will actually hold all the row numbers of the Excel sheet and column name will actually hold all the names of the column. The column value will actually hold all the values of the column. So we'll first flip to Visual Studio and then we'll understand what our things we are discussing in the slide. So let me flip to Visual Studio. Great. So this is the same project which we have been working in the previous part as well. So the next thing, as I already told, I'm going to create a custom class. So that's the first most important thing. So for the sake of time, I have already written the code for that. So this is the custom class which I was talking about. So I'm going to copy paste it right here since this is a class I'm going to put it right outside of this class so this is the custom class right great and then as I already told we need to store all the data whichever we are reading from this particular data table into a list of type data collection which is nothing but our custom class so for that I'm going to copy some more course and I'm going to paste it right here. Right. So this is the list of data collection, which is nothing but our custom class. And I'm going to call it as data call. So this is the variable which I'm assigning for this list. Right. And then I'm creating a method called populate in collection. So this is the method which accepts the file name once again and you'll understand why I'm again getting the file name because we have already got the file name right here. Since I'm actually calling the Excel to data table method inside this populate in collection method. Right. Since this method requires file name and again I should require the file name right here as well. Right. So I'm just passing it right here. So this is the method which I'm going to first call to populate the data into the collection. Right. So the data is actually being thrown as a data table from this particular method and I'm going to store it right into this table. And then all I'm doing right here is iterating through all the rows and columns of my data table and storing all the values from the data table into my custom class and then I am adding the custom class into the list of type data collection which is nothing but the same custom class so that's what I'm doing here as you can see I'm iterating into first row and then I'm iterating into all the columns of the Excel sheet like username and initial so I'm iterating through all of them and then I'm storing it into the data collection class so what I'm doing is I'm storing all the values like row number 
column name so I'm getting the column name using the table dot columns of the index of the column dot column name and then I'm also storing the column value right and then I'm adding that value right into the data call this is nothing but the list of data collections I'm adding this value as well that's it so this will add all the values into my poplet in collection method right and this will populate all the values which is great but the last and final thing which we need to do is to read the data out from this collection only then I can perform the operation in the UI right so I'm going to replace this guy that is what is our intention so for that I'm going to write one of the last and final method to end this library which is nothing but read data method so I'll just copy paste it right here so this method will actually accept the row number and the column name so if you pass the row number as one and the column name as username so if your excel sheet has got many rows no problem you just pass the row number and the column name and you can get the value out from that that's what the read data method will actually done right so for retrieving the data out from a collection I'm actually using link so that it can reduce much of our iteration stuff like what we did here right so what I'm doing is I'm just getting the value out from a data collection and then I'm setting a condition here where the column name is the one which I'm passing it and also the row number is the one which I'm passing it and then I'm selecting the column value out from the collection and also I'm returning the single value so there is a method called single or default so link actually you can write in two way one is using expression and also the next one is using the extension methods so again if you want to learn about link please go ahead to executeautomation.com and you can read a lot of stuffs a lot of articles on links where you can write these kinds of codes right great you can also write it as an extension method which is available right here I just commented this code out both does the same operation so again as you can see here I'm using extension methods like where and again I'm performing the same operation in a method and then using single or default dot column value but again you can see there is this select which is missing right but it does the operation whichever you're performing right here so I'm gonna comment this code out so that it is more readable so I'm just using this guy and this guy will return me the value out so here I'm using a try catch block again so that if there is any exception happens let's say if there is no data available for this particular column name that you have specified then return null so that's what it does right so this will end our custom libraries for reading the data out from an excel sheet right so I'm gonna save all these values great and how to use this that's the most important question so for that let me first test if this code really works so for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to the coded UI test and then let me first write a resultant variable and then you to dot populate in collection so the first and foremost thing is instead of using the excel to data table method I should call the populate in collection method so this guy will populate will first read the data from an excel sheet and also populate it into collection so both of these operations will be done using one single method it does that for us and then we need to read the data out from the excel sheet right so there are only one number of row in my excel sheet as you already know so this is the excel file which we have and it has only one row so the first row is already converted into the column name so we don't have to worry about that so this is the only row which we have which is nothing but the Karthik with initial kk so let me add one more row as well like admin and uh, let's say ll so I'm gonna save it and let me close it so now right now we have two rows 
with Karthik and KK and admin and LL so I'm gonna save it and close it right now great so for this read data method since it's accepting two parameters like row number and column name I'm gonna pass the row numbers one and the column name is username right now this guy should give me the resultant as Karthik since I'm passing one as the row number right so let me put the breakpoint right here it's just to prove the code which we have written is working fine or not that's it so let me debug this lecture test all right we, our breakpoint just hit right here so let me step over and see what is the resultant amazing do you see that the value is Karthik which is great so what if I change the row numbers two and bring the breakpoint right here and step over once again do you see that it's admin which is working so let me change the username to initial right so now it should give me as LL great and did you see that we have just called this populate in collection method only one time that is reading the data out from the Excel sheet only one time but still we could read the data out from this guy any number of times so again we are not going to the Excel sheet here since all the value is right into my memory which is nothing but my collection so because of this it improves our performance of reading the data out from the memory tremendously and that's the reason I'm storing all the values into collection and I can get the value out from this guy any number of time and that increases the performance tremendously and that is the basic purpose of storing all the value out from an Excel sheet into the data table which is nothing but the collections so that is the basic purpose so that is the reason that I've read all the data out from an Excel sheet and store it into collection of C sharp right so let me stop this guy and let me quickly write these two codes so for the sake of our time I'm not going to do a lot of coding right now so I'm just going to hard code these guys the data.xls right now and so, but if your framework moves much bigger you don't have to do this way right so I'm just going to save this and here instead of the car thick I'm going to paste this guy and again the util is not available so what I'm going to do is I can do two things instead of calling these two methods right here I can directly paste these two code here as well right so instead of calling this guy right here right in the initial met initialize method I can call it right here and I can eradicate this problem so let me just run this and I will tell you one more way of doing this to remove the issue. So I'm just running the test right now. And right now it has opened the browser and it should type the name Karthik there. Oops, it's admin. Okay, great. So we have not changed the row number, I believe. Oops so admin and admin so what is the value that we have passed username okay let me change it to one and so instead of username here I'm gonna change it to initial and the value as one great so if I pass this thing and right now if I execute this test it should type Karthik and initial as KK so which is great because that should work right now since we have already proved the point that it's reading the data from the Excel sheet so it is working fine for us right now and you can see that the username it has type as Karthik and the initial will be typed as KK 
Great. So it is working. So what is the other way instead of writing this two lines right here? So because while writing a bigger framework, we cannot always do this way. So what you can do is you can change all the custom libraries as a static method because all these libraries, whatever custom libraries you write, we always prefer to write as a static method. Only then we can be calling them anytime without creating the reference of that. So I'm going to change everything as static in this class. So all the method has been changed as a static method. Great. And then what you can do is instead of calling a reference of the Excel util, you can directly pass Excel util the class directly. And then you can replace all the utils. That's it. You can do this way and here instead of calling this method within this method you can even call this in initialize right and now if I if you execute this test it should still work oops what is there hmm I was overconfident on that oh man see this I changed the typo of this public all right so let me run this should be working right now all right it opened the browser great see the username is being typed and also the initially be typed so this is where I was saying we should use the static keyword while writing the libraries right so that's it guys so you have written a simple and more useful method for reading the data out from an Excel sheet and then populating that value into a collection and reading that value and passing that value into your coded UI test. So this way you can read the data out from an Excel sheet and perform some operations like populating the data. So that ends the part two of this data driven testing in coded UI. So thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.